Coming up on Talent News. We discover what's up with all the construction at Earl's 377. Heather Atkinson takes her passion to brand new heights. Chad Lyle plays a fun word association with prom. We discover a great new little store for your next prom adventure. We have Hudson McCabe with an Eagle Sports update. And, and this is, is the, the view from the nest. and welcome to the Talons broadcast. I'm Annabelle Thorpe. And I'm Mickey Hershorn. Driving around Argyle, it's pretty obvious that there's a lot of construction coming to our little town. So here's Annabelle Thorpe and Braden Ratcliffe with the scoop. Well, I think it'll be the, the place to be. I think it'll be the place to be seen. Um, I think it'll, it'll give everybody more options, which we don't have a lot of here in Argyle, Texas yet. And it'll, it'll keep more of the money local here in town. What used to be known as the local firehouse has now turned into Earl's 377, a unique dine and pizza restaurant off Highway 377 that plans to leave a mark on the town of Argyle. Well, we, we built in Argyle because one, um, the owner, uh, Sparky Pearson, lives here in Argyle and quite frankly is sick and tired of driving eight miles north or eight miles south to get something great to eat and um, came up with, with the idea of Earl's and, and the concept to bring something special to Argyle. The restaurant will have some of the most unique fixtures seen in an eatery, like traveling trunks, a chevalier, and army helmet lights. But all props are part of the fictitious story about how Earl's 377 came to be. Earl is a World War II veteran, um, and he met his wife, Isabella, in Italy when he was there during World War II. Isabella is very refined. You know, she's got a lot of her European roots. Um, you know, and she's really wanting to do something special for her husband. And Earl, he's just, he's, Earl's a good old boy, you know? So, it, it, they meet on the tabletop. And, you know, you can see that in a lot of things that we're going to be doing as far as our presentations. A lot of our questions when we asked ourselves building this restaurant is we had two questions. What would Isabella do? What would Earl do? Apparently, the characters Earl and Isabella chose to make a menu consisting of not just pizza, but of sandwiches, salads, and more. Even a three-day process will be used to cook pizza crust to perfection. We're calling it Argelian-style pizza. Um, it's, a, it's, it's one of our own, and uh, the excitement is huge for us. A lot of what I wanted to do with the menu for Earl's was not give a typical pizza experience. Uh, so often now that people are out there trying to make something as quickly and as inexpensively as possible, and you don't get the best product out of it. So it's gonna be more tender, it's gonna have more flavor. It, it is something special. Although the storms in 2015 created a year-long delay, Earl's 377 will open around mid-May with other restaurants and attractions coming soon. It's going to be the, the spark, the electrical place, the place to be, the heartbeat of Argyle, um, especially not just Earl's, but what, what we bring as, um, as a company and, and what we're going to have in this little pocket. You know, we, we, we've got the Fuzzy's Taco Shop next door. Obviously, Earl's is coming in. We're going to um, add a, a huge stage to do live music over the weekends. We also have a barbecue venture coming in on the property as well as a drive through coffee shop. So when we talk about the heart and the soul and the beating of, of Argyle, it's, it's going to be right here for a long time. This has been Annabelle Thorpe and Braden Ratcliffe reporting for the Talon News. Sounds like Argyle's really growing. It'll be interesting to see how much it'll change in years to come. Speaking of our great little community, here's one of our very own students, Heather Atkinson, with her unique talent. Hold on to your hats because this story is soaring. Here's Caleb Miles and Aaron Hubanks with the story. I probably want to be an airline pilot because I see how much my dad and my uncle love it. I've always grown up around it and I see how much he loves his job, but um, flying with my cousin for the first time was what really made me want to fly myself. To obtain a license, the pilot in training has to have a minimal 40 hours of flight time, some with an instructor, 
some solo. Instead of getting permits for flying as you do when driving, the trainee must receive endorsements throughout his or her training to fly solo. I want to enjoy my job as much as I see other pilots do, and it's just something that you can do that so many other people can't do, and it's nice to have the freedom. Good afternoon, this is your the captain The age to fly speaking. a plane alone is 16. However, the age to obtain a license is 17. There are three types of tests, written exams, oral exams, and check rides. My least favorite part of flying is the book training that you have to do before a test. On top of exams, Atkinson faces another challenge. Aviation is a predominantly male field. In 2015, there were 599,086 pilots, but only 6.6% were women, making Atkinson quite the standout student. I'm young and a girl, so I get a lot of support from all the people that I meet flying. I've never met a girl my age getting her license. I'm still looking for one, but I have met a lot of guys my age. Atkinson plans to continue flying through high school and into college, where she will join an aviation program. I like the flying aspect of it, mainly because I probably like being in control a little bit more. <laughs> but the travel is always fun because you can just go. This has been Caleb Miles and Aaron Eubanks reporting for the Talon News. It sounds like Heather Atkinson has a bright future ahead of her. We can't wait to see where she flies off to next. Now let's move on to what everyone's thinking about. Prom. Here's Chad Lyle with a little Q&A. Hey, this is Chad Lyle with the Talon News, and today we're going to see what people really think of prom. So I'm going to give you, like, a few words, and we're going to do a word association game, and you're just going to say the first thing that comes to your mind, okay? Okay. All right, um, first one, obviously prom. Dancing. Stressful. Shoes. Dress. Alterations. Nice. Clothes. Twitter. Dress code. Coach King. Lame. Coach King. Bad. Breathalyzer. Coach King. No comment. <laughs> Coach King. Um, I think unfortunate. All right, we are with the seniors doing our word association for prom. Um, the first word I'm going to ask you is last senior prom. Uh, excited. Stressful. Party. Sparkle. Senior year. Short. Oh, kids dancing. Not looking forward to it. Spray tan. Doritos. And promposal. Nervous. Dress. <laughs> Beautiful. Expensive. Dress code. Not needed. Very stupid. <laughs> um, last high school dance. Nostalgic. Okay. Date. Hot. <laughs> I know when I think about prom, I think about the big stores and how overwhelming they can be, especially when trying to find only one dress. So for those of you out there with similar dress problems, here's Mickey Hirschhorn and Heather Lindemann with a little prom digging to help you with your next adventure. Larissa works with pageant queens all over the country. She is a sponsor for Miss Texas. She's a sponsor for Miss New Mexico. Where we try to work with not only pageant queens, but the prom girls themselves. They walk in with a preconceived idea of what they want. Sometimes they walk out with a much, much better presentation of what they look like in the dress. Shimmer Boutique is located in Carrollton, Texas and owned by Larissa Manor. It has been open for four years and they specialize in pageant wear and prom. It really starts getting busy at the end of December, January, February and March. And we have girls coming in all the time picking out their proms because we are located in the, the key spot where you have people coming in from Texarkana, you have them coming in from South Texas, North Texas, and everybody's got a different prom, you know, time. So. This is perfect. Shimmer Boutique not only carries a variety of dresses, but they also have a vast price range that can meet every girl's budget. We carry Giovanni, Sherry Hill, McDougal, Blush, Clarice, a little bit of everything. We have, you know, price points from $2.99 on up. 
And like I said, Larissa tries to accommodate each girl in her budget. Shimmer Boutique believes that they have many attributes that set them apart from larger formal wear stores, like their amazing sales staff and variety of dresses. I think it's special attention to each girl to fit them in the right dress for their unique body and body type. And if we don't have it here in the store, Larissa finds it. And we do special orders all the time for the girls. And I haven't met one girl yet that has been unhappy with our service. This has been Mickey Hirshhorn and Heather Lindemann reporting for the Talon News. Make sure to add Shimmer Boutique in Carrollton to your prom stop next year. Now let's head over to our sports corner with Hudson McCabe. Hi, I'm Hudson McCabe, and this is your Eagle Sports Update. First off, we'd like to acknowledge boys basketball for making playoffs, and we'd also like to congratulate girls basketball for winning state two years in a row. Now here are some highlights from the state tournament in San Antonio. Yeah. I know we just signed a deal, but... Better be coming with no strings. Better be coming with no strings. We need some really nice things. We need some really big rings. I got a really big team. I got a really big team. In other news, we would like to congratulate girls soccer who currently has a record of 18-6 and 2. They won their first playoff game against Diamond Hill Jarvis and finished second in district. Take a trip to my also, boys soccer has a record of 16-1 and 2. They won their first playoff game against Midlothian and finished district 6 and 0. Girls soccer finished the season with a record of 18-7-2 and finished second in district, while boys soccer season continues with a record of 19-1-2. They finished 6-0 in district and are head of the state tournament. Baseball has a record of 14-2 and, and a district record of 2-1. and one. Girls softball currently has a record of 9-12 and 2-1 and and on district. We'd like to congratulate Lily Carter, Carly Ledane, and Kate Weaver for leading the team in hits and runs scored. Boys golf finished first in district. They also have a first, second, and third place medalist, while girls golf will advance to the regional tournament held at Van Zant Country Club. Once again, I'm Hudson McCabe, and this has been your Eagle Sports Update. Wow, it sounds like Argyle is doing really great this season. Like the Lady Eagles soccer team for not only winning playoffs, but making school history too. And the Winter Guard for placing first at their NTCA competition for the first time ever. But that's a wrap for the Talons broadcast. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at The Talon News. And for more stories following your lives, check us out at www.thetalonnews.com. Be sure to catch us next time as we discover Argyle one story at a time.